The world of hot tub chemicals can be very confusing. In fact, I even have a few videos on this subject, but today in this video, we're here specifically to talk about which kind of sanitizer you should use for your hot tub. The two primary choices are bromine and chlorine. They both have pros and cons, and we're gonna get into all of them today in this video. So I mentioned that bromine and chlorine were two of the primary sanitizers, but I alluded to the fact that there might be others. What are some of those others? Well, some people choose to have a salt water hot tub system. That's where you've got salt water in your hot tub, but it's not salty like ocean water. The other kind of system that you see sometimes is called an ozone system or an ozonator, and that uses ozone to kind of sanitize your hot tub. The problem is that in both of those cases, that doesn't mean you never add a chemical sanitizer to keep your water clean. You do, you just use less of it. So just know that even if you're using those systems, you're probably still gonna to wanna to know about bromine and chlorine and make a decision for what you think is best for your hot tub. And that's what we're talking about today. So let's get into it. So I mentioned you've got bromine and chlorine as your two primary choices for sanitizer. And let me quickly explain, most people use sanitizer and shock. They use sanitizer three or four times a week, depending upon how often they soak. And then about once a week, you add a hot tub shock, which reactivates either the chlorine or the bromine that you've been using to sanitize. And it's totally possible to use a chlorine shock and a bromine sanitizer. That's totally okay. And they also make non-chlorine shock as well. But I like a chlorine shock because I feel like it gives me a cleaner, clearer water. Most of us know all about chlorine. We've been going to public swimming pools our entire life. We instantly know that chlorine smell when it hits us. We eventually get that burning in the eyes and that comes from a heavy chlorine use. And so my first thought when I got a hot tub was, well, I don't want that in my hot tub. And that's when I began to explore alternatives like bromine, which are a little less caustic in the fumes, a little easier on the eyes and the skin, a little better overall in my opinion. But there's more to sanitizing a hot tub than just the smell and how it affects your eyes. The big plus of chlorine, of course, is that it's readily available everywhere. And it's really inexpensive, at least compared to bromine. However, there's one big downside to using chlorine in a hot tub, and that's that it doesn't hold up well to heat. And guess what a hot tub is? That's why it's very common to see chlorine used in swimming pools, but it's becoming less common in hot tubs because chlorine breaks down faster in hot water than bromine does. So while it may be cheaper initially to buy, you'll end up adding more and more and more because it doesn't last very long, whereas bromine lasts a little bit longer and it's not that much more expensive. So we're talking about chlorine and bromine and which you might want to use for the sanitizer in your hot tub. They both have pros and cons, and we've already touched on some of those things. Now I want to talk a little bit about chlorine specifically, because it can be a little bit confusing. You go to the store, you pick up a, a bottle or a bag of chlorine sanitizer. Sometimes they say pool, sometimes they say spa, sometimes they say for both. If you look at the ingredients, and I'm not going to butcher the pronunciation of the chemical names, you'll actually see more than one type of chlorine. And so this can be a little confusing. You don't know which one to buy. And what you want to look for in your sanitizer, or your shock for that matter, is you want to look for the word dichlor, D-I-C-H-L-O-R. There's going to be a lot of other kind of Latin looking fancy chemical names that, again, I'm not going to amuse you with the butchering of the pronunciation, but you want to look for that dichlor somewhere on the ingredient list. That way you know it's going to be suitable for your hot tub. It doesn't have to be pre-mixed in water and then added to your hot tub, some of the other kinds of chlorine do have to pre be pre-mixed, otherwise you risk damaging your hot tub. The dichlor can just be added straight to your hot tub and it dissipates fairly quickly in about 15 minutes or so, but it's still strong enough to do the job. And now I want to talk a little bit about the different kinds of forms that those chemicals come in, whether you're talking about chlorine or bromine. Bromine can be found in a tablet, like a little hockey puck looking tablet, a powder, or a liquid. I actually use a liquid in mine, but powder is just fine too. 
I'm not a big fan of the tablets and this is why. You have to put them in a floater. And in a giant swimming pool, that's one thing. In a tiny hot tub, every time you turn on the jets, that floater's gonna be bouncing into you, just like a game of air hockey. For me, it's just annoying and not worth it. The plus of a floater is that it dissipates the chemicals for you as needed over time. You can kinda set it and forget it. You just have to remember to check and make sure there's still something in there from time to time. But I don't like the floaters because because I find them just kind of annoying when they bump into me. But bromine, tablet, liquid, or powder, either one is fine. Chlorine, I've never seen in a liquid, and you definitely do not want to just pour in Clorox bleach, but I have seen it in a tablet and a powder as well. And again, I don't like the tablets because they require a floater and I just, I'm annoyed by those. So now I want to talk about once you've added your sanitizer, whether it's chlorine or bromine, how long do you have to wait before you can get in your hot tub? After all, most of us don't think about checking the chemicals until we want to get in. And it's an important thing to know because especially if you're using chlorine and especially if you're using uh, a non-dichlor that has to be diluted first, that is really strong. You're going to want to wait probably 45 minutes to an hour after adding that before you get in. It could be dangerous otherwise. The dichlor is probably good in about 20 minutes and so is bromine, but you never want to just add the chemicals and jump right in. Turn on all the jets, let it dissipate, let it do its thing. One thing that you'll notice sometimes if your water is high in iron content, you add that chlorine, whether it's the shock or the sanitizer, and the water turns a little bit green. That's because the chlorine interacts with that iron. It will go away, and that's a great way to know when it's safe to get in is when that color is gone. But plan on waiting at least 20 minutes after you've added your chemicals before you get in, just to play it safe. So, if you haven't already guessed, I personally use bromine in my hot tub for my sanitizer, and I use a chlorine shock. And that's for all of the reasons that we've already covered. But let me sum it up for you real quick. Chlorine is a little bit cheaper, but it breaks down in hot water really fast. So you're adding it a lot more frequently than you have to bromine. And any cost savings between bromine and chlorine go away and then some by using chlorine for your sanitizer. So I think you'll get a lot better results by using bromine. It's also a little bit less of a smell. That chlorine odor is not as strong. And the, the way it affects your eyes and your skin is a little gentler as well. So I prefer bromine as my sanitizer. Again, I mentioned earlier that I use a liquid bromine. That's this one right here from Leisure Time. It's called Reserve. And it does have a counterpart non-chlorine shock that it's designed to work with, but I actually prefer using it with a chlorine shock. And the chlorine shock that I like I'll go ahead and mention it, is from Spa Guard here. It's called Enhanced Shock, and it is indeed a dichlor chlorine product, which means I can add it, and in about 15 or 20 minutes, it'll be fully dissipated and ready to soak in. I think with those two things, your water is going to be dynamite, but the choice is always up to you. Anyway, as I mentioned, my name is Jeff Campbell. This is my channel, Hot Tub Owner HQ. I would love it if you gave me a thumbs up. I really appreciate the support and it helps YouTube know to show my content to more people. The more thumbs up I get, the more people that come to my channel. So I really appreciate that. Also hit the subscribe button and the bell notification button. That way you get notified of future videos like this one. If you have something you'd like to see in a future video or something you weren't crazy about, leave me a comment down below. I will do my best to respond to every comment I get, even the constructively critical ones. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one.